And why did he make you so special? Why did he bless you? Think about it. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. Gonna smile when I say that shit. Ah! Hey, so I'm with my buddies here, Jackson and Adam. Yeah, so uh, let's just hop into it, honestly, guys. So if you guys can meet any three people in the world, living people, who would it be? Living? Yeah. Hmm. Whew, I, I don't know. This is a tough one. Uh, you caught me off guard. Um, I'd, one of mine, I'd want to meet. Uh, I'd want to meet the Pope. Just like, I'm not even religious, but I think it'd be just kind of cool to meet him. Okay. And like, see what he's all about. Right. He's probably a pretty chill dude, I imagine. Um, I don't know. The Pope's a pretty good choice. Bill Gates. Bill Gates? Just like, he's a pretty cool guy. I'd want to like... I'd rather meet Warren Buffett before I met Bill <laughs> Gates, personally. Yeah, the, Warren Buffett would be cool, too. I think they're well. They're like best friends. Yeah, and they're both like pretty charitable people. Absolutely, they seem like cool individuals. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah, just pretty like down to earth for how rich they are. <laughs> I, I want to say, do you guys know who Jimmy Tatro is? No, mm, I can't. Say he's like the old frat guy. He's like, yeah, I'm in a frat. Have you ever okay. seen those videos? He's he's uh, in uh, Who Drew the Dicks? American Vandal. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a new show that came out. Yeah, he's... Maybe. He was really notorious, like, my freshman year of college, probably. Okay. Yeah. Like, or even earlier than that. Is he the... He's the main guy in American Vandal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. And he's also in the BMS movie and a few others. He... Yeah. I really, really like him. Like, he's... he's. I've followed him for, like, probably six years now consistently. I've seen every single one of his YouTube videos. He's made at least a couple hundred. And, um... Uh, my bad. And, uh, but I, I don't think I'd choose him as one of my top three, to be honest. As much as I like him, he's a cool guy. But I, I think my top three would be Elon Musk. Okay. Joe Rogan. Hmm. And, and probably Tony Robbins or Richard Branson. Hmm. Yeah, that... I, I, I don't know. It, yeah, I think that's who I'd choose. Probably do the Pope. The Pope. Um, maybe like Ronaldinho would be kind of cool. Ronaldinho would be sick to meet, honestly. Just like, if I was like able to chill with Ronaldinho, that'd be dope. And then I'm um, like, I don't know, like, probably like, Tommy Chong or someone like who's Tommy Chong? <laughs> like, oh, you don't know someone, Tommy Chong? No. Like uh, you like Cheech and Chong? Have you ever seen their movie? No. All right. They're All right. Oh, Cheech and Chong. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. He's wait. Leo on that '70s show. Yo, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Tommy Chong. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that guy's goofy, man. Yeah, I don't want to meet He's goofy. It's like, I don't know. I just, if I was gonna meet people. I don't know. I just would want him to be pretty chill and like understandable. But I feel like the Pope would be cool just because like he's pretty influential. Oh, absolutely. I don't know. Mm. Well, I, I had my buddy earlier on uh, from Ireland, and he was talking how big like Protestants and Catholicism is over in Ireland. Yeah. Well, he's from Northern Ireland. And, oh man. Yeah, but apparently the whole entire place is just extremely Catholic or Protestant. Yeah. I know that there's like wars in like Ireland over like uh, Catholics versus Protestants and stuff. Yeah, that's what he was saying like earlier. And stuff is crazy. I don't know. I think that was like more in the 90s, so. Yeah, that is insane. That was crazy though. So do people have to be alive? Do what? Do they have to be alive? If they're mean? dead, that makes it so much easier. If you could see, yeah. if you could meet any dead three people, dead people, then it would be. I'm awesome. more interested oh, in people who. Okay, built okay. Their past. Yeah, yeah. Go for that question then. Oh man, I'd probably say Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. Yeah. Wow, He's, that that is a pretty cool figure. Yeah, it's like I've been reading this book on him and just like how he hit the ground running with his with the kingdom that his father left him behind, and then just dominated the. 
largest portion of the world anyone's seen next to Rome. Didn't he? It's he, crazy. He conquered the much. Persian Empire, right? He conquered everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> everything in existence, basically. Yeah, he basically went from Greece all the way to Egypt. He to went to India. Greece to, I think, through Germany, then to Egypt, then throughout, like, Asia Minor and into Persia, like, India. Okay. And, like, until, like, the river that separates I think, India. I think, I think he think. actually conquered more than Rome. No, he Rome, conquered Rome, more than Rome definitely conquered more, but they just, like, expanded on his borders, basically. Actually, yeah, peak Roman Empire would be... Yeah. But... Probably conquered, I think he conquered more, like, in a single lifetime than, like... Oh, yeah, than anyone ever. No, I don't... Genghis Khan, I think, has conquered more. I, mean, I was yeah. wondering I'm Genghis, pretty sure Genghis, Genghis Khan conquered Genghis Khan more. came before him. I gotta look, I wanna look he came before up. Alexander the Great? Yeah, because... No way, really. Because that's where pole vaulting came from, was Genghis Khan. No they, shit. They did, pole vault, like, a version of pole vaulting. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, that's kind of a cool sport. Yeah, but just, like... The way that some certain people have just the, this authoritarian, you know, alpha, like they're alpha, they're an alpha person. Right. Like they command their respective people like that. Like Julius Caesar might be another one for me because he was... I don't know much about Julius Caesar. Yeah. Just crazy how they have the way to just command people and bring them to their very best. Right. And just have the up, like command the utmost respect people love a strong leader that's yeah. for sure yeah just but everything about them is you just respect alpha. that a lot yeah okay. i think there's and like or go ahead yeah keep i think going. my last one would be like aldous huxley who's aldous huxley he's um he used to be an author he i think he died like it was a long time ago okay but he wrote a lot of classic books like uh, brave new world and I've heard Brave, of that book before. Brave New World was written like a hundred years ago. No shit. And there are inventions that weren't invented then that we use today in that book. He, so like, he, he was like a prediction so of the future? into the future. Wow. When he wrote that book. It's insane. Like, you I got, wanna, that takes I want to meet someone like that. That's you know? cool. And uh, just so smart. Like when you read his books, you have to look up words on everything. It's page. fun to like imagine the future, man. Like even... Yeah. Well, I was looking up the the population in 2100 is going to be like 11 billion or something like that. That's yeah. too many. <laughs> Just in my lifetime, it's yeah. gone up 2 billion people. Yeah, it's nuts. It's crazy. I know. Uh, I don't know. If I was doing dead people, my answers would be a lot different. Probably too. Not to be rude, oh. but can you speak up a little bit? Just oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, because yeah, 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 the I mic can... will uh, pick it up a lot better. No, yeah, I understand. Uh, I'd probably like do Jesus, Jesus Christ. Uh, well, that'd be a cool guy. Like, yeah. I'm not really Absolutely. religious, but I don't think was, anybody's arguing with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might swap out Julius Caesar for <laughs> Jesus. Um, for Jesus, George Washington. I'd want to meet George Washington. Like, just like yeah, that see would what be an he's interesting like. one. I don't know. He's just Samuel Adams as well. Samuel Adams. Mm -hmm. Who was it? It was uh, number two. There were two people that died on July fourth, fifty years after they signed the Constitution. I think it was John Adams and, or is it Sam uh, Adams? John Hancock or no? no, 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 no. Talking about. Yeah, I'll John, look John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. I think. Yeah, Thomas. Jefferson. I think, I think, was it right. Thomas Jefferson? I think Thomas Jefferson was uh, one of them. Yep. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both died on July 4th, yep. 1826, 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. That's crazy. That yeah. is really bizarre. Well, Alexander the Great was before Genghis Khan. Because they were rivals, oh, dude. They did not like each other. These two didn't know. get along, but they were like best friends yeah. at the same time. Yeah, they understood each other. That's crazy. 50 years after the signing, and they both die. Yeah. What are the odds? Wow. That is crazy. Have you guys ever seen those, like, celebrity look-alikes? Like, like, Mesuit Ozil and, like, Enzo Ferrari. They look so similar. Yeah, they do look alike. I don't know. Like, yeah, I've seen those. I know what you're talking like, about. Like, where it's just, like, two old celebrity, like, an old celebrity 
or just famous for whatever. They they yeah. have pictures of them and somebody today, and they just look identical. It's crazy. Yeah, that I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen stuff like that. I don't know. It's always interesting. Yeah, there's like people that have like doppelgangers, basically, just like uh, like people. Um, the, there was like a case uh, in the news like two or two or three months ago, and it was about this guy who like got released from prison because he had like he was the wrong guy. And he, like, kept insisting. He was like, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And, like, everyone says that. Uh-huh. And um, it turns out, like, it actually wasn't him, but it was, like, this guy who looks identical to him. Like, they're not related at all. No shit. Yeah, but this dude, like, uh-huh. looked. Like, if if you put them both side by side, like, uh-huh. I couldn't pick out, like, one from the other. Wow. Like, they look like twins. And he Not was, related like, at all. Yeah, and so, like... I mean, it was, like, understandable. What are the like, odds that they were, like, in similar places to be yeah, caught I like know. that, you like, know? It was bad luck for that one dude. I'm going to see if I can find it, like, the picture of, like, how similar. Here, here, I'll, I can look it up on here. Look up, like... That's why we got the TV now, baby. Look up two, like, identical prisoners. Two identical prisoners. Yeah. I... So, uh... Um... It might be... Will and William West. Or no, that's... Yeah, go, Will and William West. Will and William West? Yeah, I think it's that one. No, that's too old. I want to... Gosh, I can't think of like... Yeah, that's not the right one, but I guess that must be a similar case. Um, huh. I don't know what I would like Google it under. Here's an interesting but, question for you guys. Where do you find the balance between being selfish and selfless? Because, like, that shit you got to, like, find a balance between. Because if you're too selfish, then you take too much, then you're an asshole. Yeah. And if you're too selfless, then you're a pussy. And you get walked all yeah. over. So you got to find that balance between the two. And I feel like it really comes down to the individual you're dealing with. I feel like yeah. that's a healthy balance. Yeah. I would say... I would definitely have to be more selfless and selfish I to agree. balance out, like probably 75 to 25. Hell yeah, that's a good yeah. ratio, that's a good ratio. Yeah, I take a little bit for myself, but most for others. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And that, that makes this world a better place, you know? Yeah. The more people start doing that. Mm-hmm. Respectable. What about you, Jackson? I don't know. I think um, it depends on the people that I'm like with. I think if I'm like with nine, like with most ninety-five percent of people, I'm pretty selfless. But then there's some people that just like get on my yeah. nerves that yeah. I don't want to like. We all like, have those people. Okay, okay, I I'm understand. Like, you know, but most of the time, I think it's probably more important to me to be selfless than selfish. I don't know. It's just like something I, that might like. I don't know, like was just kind of really instilled to me, like, from a young age that, like... Mm-hmm. Absolutely, just give back, yeah. Like, my dad, like, he, he's a firefighter, so he, like, does, like, public work anyways, but, like, like, it's annoying, like, almost to the point, like, and my dad's not a pussy by any means, like, he has a legendary temper, but, like, <laughs> if anyone, like, you know, is pulled over on the side of the road like he pulls over immediately to help like change that's what's up that's cool that type of stuff that's just making the world a better place that's what that's what it is and you gotta respect that yeah like Mm -hmm. offers to like help yeah like fix neighbors like windows and stuff and like just does like oh obviously he's not a pussy that's just a great human being man yeah like that's a great human being like he like i don't know like he's selfless in that way and I think that's, like, something that I try to be, like, where he's, like, he's not, like, helping everyone with everything, but, like, if it's something where they're, like, really in need of help and they don't, like, know what they're doing or they need someone else, then, yeah, he'll always help Yeah, that's, that's depressing sometimes, like, driving past people. Like, I, I drove past, like, a whole family the other day. Mm-hmm. Well, this, this was probably, like, a few months ago, actually, but and I was just, like... Just went by on the highway. I look past, and it's like like six kids and just two parents, and they're, you can just tell they're stressed out. Like yeah. 
Their their mm -hmm. body language is just shows exemplifies stress. Yeah, like I don't know. I've like I've like asked him about it before, like why do you always stop? Like even when it's sometimes like it's obviously like it's like a minor wreck. Like it'll be like someone like backed into someone else's car and he'll still like pull over and, like get out and I'll be like, Why do you do that? And he's like, Oh, it's because I'm like, uh, I'm a firefighter, so it's like my public duty to like make sure everyone is all right. And I'm like, if you're off the job, like, I don't know. Yeah. But I guess it's cool that like he's kind of on the job when he's not on the job. Right, right. So like, I think it's, that's cool to me that like when people are just kind of willing to like, you know, take a delay in their day in order to help someone else. Right, especially when, yeah, whenever they're doing a favor and it's like an inconvenience for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, if someone's like stuck on the side of the road and they need like a jump start or need someone to help them change their tire, then like, yeah, it might take you like an extra 20 minutes to pull over, but if you didn't pull over, then maybe they're waiting there for like hours. Absolutely. Like, I pulled over to help a guy once and he was like, saying to me like he had been like standing on the side of the interstate for like two hours like and no one would pull over mm. and i was like that's crazy because it took me like five minutes to help, to like uh jump start his car and get him on his way so mm. i was like it's just kind it's of like your time it's worth yeah your time. i mean I'm if not, you're not in a rush yeah you don't have to like break your back to help someone but if if you're not if you don't have anything better to do then you should be helping them yeah yeah i agree i don't know you just kind of feel like i feel like you just kind of feel or at least i'd kind of feel shitty about myself if you just left them <laughs> but that's yeah it's always a good thing to help people do you guys so i've, I've heard of like energy depleting diets have you ever heard of like energy like but also they're like energy depleting people as well. Yeah. Like if you guys, that, that's something I've picked up on a lot more recently. Like I, I tend mm -hmm. to stray away from some people because like, I don't know, just, some people just kind of suck to be around. Yeah, definitely. I worked at a, I worked at Home Depot and hy V, So I interacted with a lot of people. And there's just some people and you have. The quality of people in college is pretty good though. It is. It's a lot better. And then you get into like the workforce and it's garbage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like people just seem to hate life almost. Well, nobody. Some of those jobs just shouldn't be worked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we. I don't know. I I kind of believe the future, which I apparently they've been saying this for years, but I kind of think the future is going to involve some form of uh, I don't know, machines doing these bullshit jobs like working at Burger King or working at McDonald's. Yeah, I hope you know, it doesn't like, get to that point. I think it would be a good thing. But then we can have more of a... I think, like, we could, like, use our time better. Recreation-based. Like, we could spend time doing things we like to pursue, you know? Mm-hmm. Like that, Maybe. and then, um... Does this just Doing come meaningful out? work. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think... How would you spend your time? If, if you, like... If, if working wasn't a thing, what would you do? I'd be with the boys. <laughs> You'd be yeah, with the boys? All the time. I think, like, doing what we're doing now. <laughs> I think initially, yeah, I would waste the time completely. Playing video games, like, hanging out. So you're saying in the beginning? Yeah, but I think... Is money also like not get, Like, given some time, you just kind of, like... Just tired of, like, partying and just stuff. Just fundamental, like... You, I'd probably read. Just I read a lot. Read, yeah. so much. I'd read a lot, too. Yeah. I was There's always so a many big books reader. I want to read. Have you guys ever seen my book collection by chance? Mm -mm. I have a big one at, at my house. It, really? Yeah. What kind of books do you guys like to read? Um, I like to read, like, I don't know. I've always liked to read, like, the, um, like, fantasy novels are pretty good. But then I started, like, lately getting into more nonfiction, um, just, like. Like, factual stuff? Like, how, like, stuff you can learn, like, applicable knowledge? Like, um, like, autobiographies. Yeah. Like, I read this one book. It was called, like, um, Run. It was, like, Run Through the Jungle. 
Okay. It was about this guy uh, who had lived in uh, Cambodia. And, like, this is around the time of the Vietnam War, and there's, like, um, the Cambodian uh, genocide. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No, but, I haven't. Uh, so there's, like, this dictator, uh, Pol Pot. It's a pretty just awful guy in Cambodia. He started this, like, cultural revolution. And so it was about, like, this guy's life. Like, he grew up during this genocide, and, like, his experience, like, it basically, like, suffering through it, and then, like, how he escaped like his slave camp and just like took out like he was like I think he was like a teenager like thir 12 or 13 and he like took off running you say like a lot yeah I, know, like, <laughs> shit. I was just thinking that earlier <laughs> I'm sorry I just couldn't stop laughing yeah no you're good I'm not making I, fun no, of you I'm I, not making fun of you I just I think understand. it's funny yeah you're good um but he like um he ran into the jungle and just like escaped all of his captors and um but it was pretty like it was a cool story <laughs> damn i keep now, now, now i'm gonna keep thinking about it but um, it was a cool story just to hear about uh his experience and so i've started to like read more books <laughs> 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 about um, people's first-hand experiences, like uh, autobiographies. That's cool. That's cool. I I've read. I want to. I don't know if I've read any autobiographies. I don't know if I have. I, I know I own some. I don't know <laughs> if I've actually read any though. Yeah. What's your guys' favorite book you've read? Brave New World. Brave New World. Favorite. That's the one from or, 100 years ago. Yeah. What What's the author again? Aldous Huxley. Alden Huxley. Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley. Yeah. Okay. He's like an old, um, old British guy, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, dead old British guy. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I also I love the book series, the Aragon series. Okay. Yeah. It was really fantastic. Um. So you guys are both into like more fantasy. I liked fantasy yeah. books. I kind of read anything. That's just cool. I read a lot of science fiction, too. I like history. That's cool. Historical Curious. fiction's yeah. hard to beat. Historical fiction. Yeah. I don't know. What What is that? Would, I'll read anything. That'd right? be like a story. Um, like a made-up like, story? Like a, okay. a made-up story about a certain event. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like that, because then it's, it's like, like a real-life story, and you can get creative with it. Yeah. Like the Civil War or something, and like... Mm -hmm. Just some crazy story that never had, happened, but it yeah, seems believable. Yeah, like meth heads to the equation. So yeah. more. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd re, I would read anything, really. I don't know. There wasn't much stuff, like... I'm pretty much non-fiction, to be honest. I'm, that's, like, all I read. Yeah, I like bibliobiographies. Bibli... <laughs> bibliobiographies? Yeah. What are those? Like, uh, ones that are on, like... Like, I have one that's about, like, Alexander the Great right now. Okay. Yeah. It's like people who didn't write one about themselves, basically. <laughs> Autobiographies? Isn't like... that just a normal biography, though? I yeah. Guess. Is, yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, yeah, that's what's up. I mean, you learn a lot, like, mm -hmm. especially you could, like, kind of adapt, like, character traits from those people. Because yeah. you, you look at them and you say, I kind of I want to be like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, yeah you drive inspiration from that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I. I I enjoy this age that we live in, man, because having, I, I'm, the reason I started doing these podcasts is because I got into podcasts so much, like, listening to it, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I think I can produce some pretty decent content, Yeah, and more so, I just enjoy listening to their content, and yeah. I don't even know where I was going with that now, but. That's fun. I don't know. I think nonfiction books are good just because, like, the world is uh, such an interesting place. Like, the, the stuff that goes on um, just sounds like uh, just as crazy as stuff that happens in a fantasy novel. Like, when you read about just uh, the stories of people like Alexander the Great, mm -hmm. it sounds like a fantasy novel. Three but it's like... 
it's real and that's that's yeah. what that's what makes like nonfiction books pretty cool just thinking about how crazy stuff is but it still happens mm -hmm. I just like that it's real and you can learn something about it yeah, yeah. it's like educational yeah uh, learn something to get your head in life or just to feed your curiosity either one yeah are you guys pretty curious people you guys seem curious if you, if you read a lot yeah I like yeah, I, I really, I don't know, I really like history a lot. Mm -hmm. I was always pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, history is interesting. Uh, I just feel like you learn so much more from it. Yeah. I always notice in history classes, too, like, there's always a male teacher. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. It's, it's always yeah. a dude. No, yeah, I, I actually read a statistic on that, like, it's one of the only subjects that's male dominated. Like yeah. in a, all the other teaching subjects, it's mainly females. I always did pretty well in history too. I enjoy that class. It's a good, it's yeah. a good class. Yeah, definitely. I just feel like in terms of ac like max mass content, there's more to learn than like just life lessons in general. Oh, absolutely, just absolutely. Like learning from the past, you know. Because I mean, it's human nature. Everything really. we know is from the past. Yep. And you learn from the past. You learn from our mistakes. Like I like studying like the worst parts. I'm, I if there's anything I have looked into, I would say it's World War II the most. Really? I have researched the fuck out of World War II. I enjoy that war a lot. It's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I did um, like uh, AP World History. Did you do like AP classes in high school? No, I didn't. So it's like advanced placement where it counts as a college credit. Right. So it's oh, I know what they are. Like, yeah. yeah, like my, uh, so my teacher, he was actually, I had Mr. Buck. He was actually a college professor. Okay. But he teaches a high school too. And um, he, awesome. so uh, like I got really into world history and I like, he introduced kind of in like normal history classes it always kind of, it was like basically like Western history, like all about Europe and stuff. But then we like started talking a lot more about China and just all the stuff that like happened there that like most people just kind of forget about. Like China's just kind of forgotten. Right. And there's a really long history there too. It's pretty cool. I always thought it was interesting. Like I probably prefer Western history overall more just because I relate to the culture better, I guess. And, and there's some pride there. You have some... Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just, your country. And, I mean, Europe had just a lot of, like, interesting stuff happening mm -hmm. throughout yeah, history. Yeah, right. Well, it's so much more history, so much more time for history over there. Yeah. Until you get to middle medieval times, and just nothing happened for, like, 500 years. No but shit. It was just the same thing. Like, it was feudal times. It was the most... Ugh. There's no... Way in like these are the 1500s. No, yeah, yeah, that, that was probably the Renaissance. That's probably uh, the Renaissance, Renaissance was would have been that would be like 14, before. 13 to I'm guessing now, yeah, 1200s, yeah, 12 to 13. But there was a couple hundred years of history where just nothing happened, <laughs> like, like human. Humans oh, went nowhere. the Dark Ages. Yeah, feudal what? times after Roman, like after the Roman Empire collapsed, really? just nothing happened. Yeah, that's that's why they're called the Dark Ages. Yeah. It's just there's no advancement. Yeah, like no progress made. It's they just they really like, just want to step back, a big fat step. They back. They didn't. I don't know if they went back. They made some achievements, but Probably. really their only achievements were. They basically just kind of stayed at the same point yeah, in the time. Central religion, for, which is kind of unknown. It's like, I don't know, like think of how different like the 1920s are to like today. Uh-huh. But in that time period, it would be like 100 years and just no technological differences. That's crazy. It's just life it's is the imagine. exact same like 100 years and later. We've seen so much progress in our lifetime, yeah. our short lives, and... Yeah. I mean... It's just hard to imagine a world that there was no technological advancement. Yeah. It was so, people, like, anti-science. No people were, like, the equivalent of a 90-year-old when they were, like, 35 back then. 
Yeah, true, true. Like, like we would always already have families with kids half grown. The average, the average like death age was like 33, 32. Yeah. Makes you grateful to be alive now, you know? Yeah. But people would, you'd have like nine kids, like maybe like four of them would survive yeah. until they're in a Yeah, really. And like, it's, so that's just crazy to think about. That That'd be weird to have like, your like perspective of kids because you have to be a little bit desensitized if it's happening to everybody, yeah. you know? Like if that's the norm that you're expected to lose a few kids and you're supposed to pop out a ton to keep that percentage high, you know? <laughs> yeah. You just, it's... Like, that's that'd be weird, because, like, now, like, if a mother loses her child, you know, like, that's going to affect her psychologically, but, like, you can't, you can't, like, yeah, you can't you let just, that stack up with nine kids, or, like, say you lose four kids. Yeah. You're just... I'm like, sure it's hard attached, still, but, but, yeah. You couldn't, is what it is. If it's the norm, I mean, they, they're probably accepted it a lot easier than now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think... It was just a, like that period of time was just really awful for yeah. there was 99% no, of people because no it's just 99% society. basically slaves. And it went, yeah, I looked up when the dark ages were. Yeah, I, I want to be when more accurate. were the dark ages? 500 yes. to 1,000. Okay. All right, that makes yeah. <laughs> the Renaissance, yeah, the Renaissance would be around twelve to thirteen. So, which, yeah. when did the there Roman actually, Empire fall? Like right before that. Uh, it would have been it was like four eighty six. Right? Shortly after Christ. Well, not shortly. No, it would have been long. It would have been a couple Christ. hundred years after. Yeah, fall. It makes four seventy six. That's what it was. It makes you think, like, what if? Where would society be now at 2017 if the Dark Ages were just cut out and oh, put dude. us five year, hundred years in advance? Like we would be so far right now. Oh my God! Holy shit! Yeah, we would. Uh, assuming we all we'd, get to we'd the, all be like holograms right now, <laughs> right? Assuming we get the right people involved, you know. But I don't know. People would have come at different points. Like, what if? What if Thomas Edison was the man that was destined to invent the light bulb? And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, like what if he was the one? But if he came years later, maybe he couldn't have figured out smartphones as well. You know, what yeah. I mean? like maybe his brain just worked because he. Well, he was notorious for persistence. Yeah. yeah. So that maybe maybe it would be effective with smartphones, or maybe you need like more like an analytical mind with smartphones. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, what if some people just came around at the right time in history? Yeah. Oh, I think that's definitely a big part. Yeah. Um, like, what if like think they're in the Dark Ages? Or, uh, Leonardo da Vinci came along a few hundred years later when we actually had more technology. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'd true. That'd be crazy. That dude knew what a helicopter but was. Then, like, think the room. Or Nikola Tesla came around a few years later. Yeah. Yeah. That would be insane. Think of, but you gotta think the reverse too. Like during the Da Vinci painting just sold for. Sorry to cut you off. That no, yeah, it like, just it just sold for four hundred something million. Yeah, four hundred fifty million. Right? Four hundred fifty million. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. What were you saying? Sorry, Jackson. So no, you're fine. Um, the like reverse is true too. During the Dark Ages, think of how many like naturally smart people there were. They were probably born. Uh huh. That just like died when they were like six yeah. or seven. Right. Or. Or uh, just didn't know anything. Or just other than were never like taught how to read or basic stuff. Yeah. All the potential. Like See, they, that's were, an they were stuck thinking. farming there instead of so many great minds that went to waste. Yeah. Absolutely. Just, you just have like a couple oh, that's hundred fun years. To think about. You have a couple hundred years where ninety eight percent of your people are just farmers. Yeah. Peasants. Like they're just farming, <laughs> and that's basically all they're doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that isn't really uh, they're not like, the most thought-provoking career or just yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, so there's just like a you're bunch just, of like you're just worried about eating. There's, yeah, you're well, it's Maslow's like, hierarchy. It's just like yeah. you gotta you gotta meet those fundamental human needs before yeah. you can work your way up, and then. Yeah, like what if Albert Einstein had been born during the Dark Ages? He just would have been completely wasted. Right. Yeah. Right. So if yeah, if those we'd people... be like because those people are really who put us ahead as a civilization. The yeah. Elon Musk's of the world, the Nikola Teslas, yeah, the Abraham Lincoln's, whatever. Like those yeah. people are what really make an impact on history. Yeah. 
So. They especially, well, may, more so than like I'm Abraham not, Lincoln, the people who make advancements in technology, the Steve Jobs, like, like Alan they Turing. really shaped the culture. They shaped the world. I'm not uh, Alan Turing. And Who's that? He's, he like created the first computer. Alan yeah. Turing? Uh, really? uh, hey, did you, you ever watch movie? the Imitation Game? Imitation Game? Yeah. No, I've never seen that before. It's right? World War II. It's okay. about him and uh, he broke Enigma, which was the German coding. I don't know if that is. Oh, so, it like, German it was their, like, like, when they were, machine. yeah, when they would, they send, would messages. send messages through Enigma. It, and it was like their system of code. Like their system of Morse code. Yeah, kind of. Um, and basically one message okay. would be like, what, a hundred million different messages? And it changes like every couple hours. Like wow. it was a machine-based code, and um, it was like really complicated so that you like, it was basically like uncrackable. Like mm -hmm. okay. most people thought of it like it was like an uncrackable code, but then like this guy came along and he was like, just a mathematic genius. We need he to just make like this machine, his way through. and then it, we he can built, break Enigma with the machine. He built a computer that to figure out the code. Wow! Like he made this machine that would yeah. like crack the code for him. And this is during World War Two. Yeah, and yeah. what? Like it was pretty, and like we would have the Allies would have won the war either way, but he probably shortened the war by like years. Years. Holy shit! Just yeah. because we like cracked because. their code, so then we knew where all their submarines and like. Wow. Yeah. So. That's important information. Yeah, like we were basically. I Holy mean, shit! It's yeah. like screen cheating. Like yeah. he figured out. <laughs> it, it's knowing what your enemy is doing yeah. before he does it. Makes them predictable. The part was, Makes them vulnerable. Yeah. Part the hard part was is they couldn't know that like they couldn't let the Germans know. Yeah, that they, they had that to, they had the code. So some things they had to let happen that they could have prevented. Yeah, so, so they got to play it makes God. sense. They in in the grand God. scheme, you got to think long term. Yeah, like in my opinion, you have to think long term. So you'd have to knowingly let like some German attacks be successful yep. and innocent people die, because so if you it's long term. Because thinking. if all the attacks started getting intercepted, then the Germans then they would, would change figure the out that their mm -hmm. code was broken and they'd change it to a different system. Mm -hmm. So then the the art of it, I guess, becomes when to attack. Yep. When they're most vulnerable. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so talk about influencing history, man. Like yeah. Like that guy came around at the right time. He was yeah. born in the right time. He had yeah. a purpose. Like that is a huge impact on history. Mm -hmm. Do you even know his name? Yeah, Alan Turing. Alec. Alan Turing. Alan Turing? Yeah, it's it's spelled by uh here we can look him up. Yeah, for sure. Uh A L A N obviously for Alan. And then uh T U R I N G. Yeah, Alan Turing. Alan Turing, okay. Uh but he uh Yeah, he um he cracked basically the Nazi code. Is this the actor that plays him? Yeah, Benedict uh, Cumberpatch. I think. Okay, okay. And what's the name of the movie about Alan Turing? Uh, the, the Imitation, imitation game. game. The Imitation Game? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I yeah, just said pretty Imitation good. for a second. No. Yeah, that it's sounds pretty cool. Good. You should watch it. His life was interesting, too, because he was a gay person. Oh, no shit. And that was it illegal. wasn't like During socially During a very accepted. unaccepted time. It was illegal. Yeah. It was illegal mm -hmm. in the United States. No, no he, he was, was he was British. Yeah, he was British. Really? Yeah. Wow, I would have thought Britain would have been past that back then. Mm -hmm. No. Wow. And, um, yeah. So, the his story is kind of unfortunate because he's really probably one of the biggest heroes of like World War Two, like shortened the war by years, but then he still ended up he like ended up killing himself. Did he killed himself? Mm -hmm. He killed himself, really. Not too long. I think like 15 years after. Yeah. Maybe 10, 15 years after. Like, 10, uh, 50 years after what? World War II. Because of like the <laughs> treatment he received yeah. for being gay, basically. No shit. So he's yeah. probably, yeah, one of the like Britain's biggest heroes. Like basically invented the modern computer as we know it. And he's it. basically bullied to the point that he killed himself. Yeah. He had to, he had to take uh, chemicals 
Yeah, it was like chemically castrated. Yeah. What, what do you mean? It was like chemical castration. It's like he had to take this medicine that would make it so that he wouldn't be able to reproduce anymore. Are you it was, serious? It would, it would make yeah. him, uh, so that he like he couldn't produce sperm. Yeah, it would, like, I think it killed his sex drive and everything. What it the would just, fuck? Yeah, yeah, just like and he destroy up, your sex drive, and I think it hit him pretty hard mentally, and ended up taking his own life. What? Yeah, it, that was like that. So these, did. this is like going on in the fifties. The forties, yeah, would have been like forties, forties, and forties, fifties. Okay. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! What a like outdated way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So, one of probably, yeah, the biggest heroes from World War Two, just of all time. And but his name like is kind of cool because his story like he's not like super well known, but he's ex- in, like extremely important. Right. Um, one of the yeah behind the scenes man. The only behind the scenes guy I really know is like Edward Snowden. Yeah. Yeah. Hero. Do you guys think he's a hero? I don't know. I think he is. I think that like he made some mistakes, but overall his intentions were good and he definitely He revealed exposed, the truth. Yeah, some good mm-hmm. things that needed to be. I think he got a lot of criticism because he fled to China and Russia. Yeah, and he's in like Russia enemies now. Of the US. But Honestly, like, if you're in his position, where do you go that you feel safe from, like, the USA? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question to ask. There's nowhere in the world other than China and Russia that I would feel, like, SEAL Team 6 isn't going to kick in my door and, like, shoot me. (laughs) I'd probably go to Russia. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that would suck to be wanted by the U.S. government. Yeah. Oh, the worst. Especially, I mean, being wanted by the U.S. government's bad, but being... Like, one of the biggest fugitives in the world. Holy shit. Like, couldn't even imagine. Even, it's amazing, like, Osama bin Laden. How did he get like, away How did he so long? hide for so long? Which, there's, like, conspiracy theories about that, too. That but, we actually knew where he was? Yeah. No, or I... that he's well, still living? There's theories that, no, uh, he's still living. like, Pakistan knew where he was and was hiding him from the U.S. government. Or they... Like, to this day? Yeah, there's, well, no, that um, they were hiding them, and the U.S. government found okay. out. Because there was, I don't know if you remember, like, around the time, but there was, it was actually, like, a big thing. Well, one, it was big when he was killed, like, but uh, Pakistan was really upset because we basically just didn't tell them. He was, like, 20 minutes away from one of Pakistan's biggest cities, and oh. the U.S., we... Our intelligence believed that the Pac- someone in the Pakistani intelligence probably knew where Osama bin Laden was and was hiding him. So not necessarily the idea that like all of Pakistan knew and was hiding him, just the idea that there was some like corrupt people in the Pakistani government that were hiding him. Right. And so we didn't tell Pakistan that we were going to raid and kill him. We just flew helicopters into Pakistan. No landed shit. Them, like in their city. One of them broke down. Yeah, just they the land city. Up. They had to blow yeah, it up. Yeah, one of the, the Blackhawks that they took, yeah, broke down, and so they just, like, blew it up in the city. The U.S. government blew yeah. it up? Yeah. So we basically just, like, go... It was a big deal because Pakistan's, like, a sovereign nation, and we just, like, flew in, killed this guy, and flew Took out. his body. <laughs> like, we basically yeah. flew in and did a military operation. They really took his body? Yeah, dumped in the ocean. It would be, a, it would be like us yeah. doing, like, a military operation in, like, France or something and not telling them that we were going to do it. Right. And so Pakistan was, like, really upset, but the U.S. was kind of like, what's Pakistan really going to do? <laughs> like, it, yeah. it's hard to bully the U.S. Absolutely, I mean. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we just kind of... They were, they were upset, and we were just kind of like, oh, okay, we don't care. And <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. We don't <laughs> care. <laughs> but, no, it was just how, I mean, yeah, I couldn't imagine being Edward Snowden trying to, when you have, like, the full power of the U.S. looking for you. Ooh, that'd be scary. Especially for treason. Yeah. 
and especially with the way he, like the secrets that he revealed i'm sure it was probably like the cia and the fbi are probably like scrambling right in the nsa so you have the cia after you which would just be a terrifying That'd suck yeah because you wouldn't know how to, like who to trust I, I wouldn't I even trust anybody. even if I like went and like fled deep into like the Amazon jungle, I still wouldn't feel safe. Like Hell no. by myself, even. I don't think I would either, honestly. <laughs> even if I was like living in some cave, like out in the woods, I would just be like, no way. I, I so, there's always a chance they could track you some yeah. way, somehow. Yeah. So it's just hey, so many cameras around. Yeah. I don't know what I would do if I was trying to hide my identity. I'd probably let my hair grow out or diet or something. Yeah, you just have to, I guess, flee to somewhere remote enough that hopefully no one ever finds you. Yeah, yeah. Some random island out somewhere. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy. just like impossible to hide. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to fantasize about things like that crazy. Like, obviously, they, that's kind of like the concept of Grand Theft Auto, right? Like, you just do these crazy outlandish things and then... Just, like you would never do this in real life obviously yeah. but it's fun to like fantasize about being that like reckless I guess yeah just doing something crazy but without the <laughs> I mean yeah Grand Theft Auto you can do fun stuff without completely ruining your life true yeah yeah I mean Edward Snowden is probably never going to be able to leave Russia never going to be able never. to leave Moscow unlikely <laughs> yeah very unlikely and then you have, uh, like, uh, Assange uh, uh, from uh, WikiLeaks. I don't know who that is, to be honest. Uh, Julian Assange. Uh, you know, like, WikiLeaks, what WikiLeaks is? I know, yeah, I get the idea. I, I know the idea, yeah. It's a, they, like, hack, or kind of, they just... They're, like, uh, they're not, like... A bad thing. They're supposed to be like neutral. Their whole goal is like transparency. Mm -hmm. they're, so, just, they're running towards like the truth. Like the Edward yeah. Snowden leaks. Okay. Like that's he, the yeah. Okay. The Edward Snowden leaks. Like he leaked those to WikiLeaks, and then they like host these leaks of like so they release classified information basically. Damn. It's not supposed to be released. So this guy who started like, them. Shout out to WikiLeaks. Yeah, this guy who started it, Julian Assange, like. Every single major country in the world basically hates him. The U.S. has, like, standing orders to arrest him. And so uh, he, right now, I think he's in, like, the Nigerian embassy in London. And oh. he's, like, been in there for, like, years. Like, no he shit. can't even, li like, leave that building because if he does, he'll be arrested. Because wow. the embassy is, like, sovereign territory. Uh -huh. So they can't, like, the U.S. can't come and... Uh, I mean, we could, but it would be, like, a massive deal to, like, mm -hmm. invade someone else's mm -hmm. uh, embassy. Why don't they just give it up? Like, oh, the, the owners of the embassy. I don't know. I They must, they might not. I, 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 I don't know which country if, it if is. If the U.S. Some, can't go in there, then they probably just can't agree on something. Maybe yeah, they're probably, they'll probably, but... Um, they're probably keeping him in there just trying to negotiate something with the U.S. Honestly, they're probably negotiating money for him. <laughs> He's basically like their hostage at this point. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, the U.S. will offer that country something nice and then mm -hmm. it'll yeah, be the real. bargaining chip. <laughs> but he, uh, he's, so he's, yeah, he's like completely just trapped in that building and he can't leave. <laughs> that sucks. They were weird lifestyle. That's like a form of being in jail, you know? Yeah. They kind of just pinned him in, like, one spot and then just left him there. Yeah. Just forced him to stay in one building for the rest of his life. Um, couldn't do it. What if the U.S. government cut off food supply to that restaurant? What if he's just been <laughs> Shawshanking his way out this whole time? Well, I think... <laughs> just tunneling out. I think, um... Oh, oh, yeah. I, I forgot the reference. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie, too. Yeah, yeah. that's funny, yeah. Now that I... Th Think about it. Digging a hole in the basement. Yeah. I think the reason that the embassy hasn't turned him over is because there's a lot of credence to the fact that the charges that he's, like, accused of are really trumped up. Uh-huh. Um, because technically, according to U.S. law, like, WikiLeaks isn't illegal in and of itself because they don't directly hack the government. They just receive 
information from the hackers. Okay. So it would be like me hacking the CIA and then sending the files to WikiLeaks. So WikiLeaks is just freedom of the press, mm -hmm. basically, because they didn't commit any crimes. They just received this information. Uh-huh. Obviously, like, the U.S. government doesn't like it when their top-secret files are leaked online. So there's, they think that, I mean, I believe it, too, that the charges, he's charged of, like, an assault or something, and there's a lot of, like, evidence that shows that it's just, like, completely fabricated charge so they can arrest so him. So he's innocent, really? Wow. Yeah, he's he's really within his rights, like, freedom of the press, but it's just the stuff that he reports on is not <laughs> well-liked by the U.S. government or really any other major Western nation. Understandable. Because he, like, releases... Like, because it's so stuff. honest. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, he's... But, so, yeah, he's kind of just stuck for life. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much prison. Yeah. Pretty much prison. A lot better than prison, Basically. though. Basically. <laughs> How yeah. many floors is it? I don't know. It's an embassy, so it's see. probably a pretty size, pretty decent sized building. He's like, if I choose building stand for the rest of my life, I'd probably be. The White House would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know all the options in the world, you know? Just... I would like to see the Red Palace. What's the Red Palace? It's the. Capitol building of Moscow. Yeah. Oh, really? Russia. Yeah, I'll pull up a picture of it. Red You've house. probably seen it before. So it's where Putin lives. Probably. Uh, no, I think he has his own place, but. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Trump, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's pretty. It's not that. That's Tibet. Um, no, uh, here, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Russia. Probably they're it's part a, of the Kremlin. Oh, I've seen these tops before. They're yeah. um they look like Hershey kisses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are this is cool. That's a cool place, um travel destination, man. Yeah, the architecture's really unique. Russia would be cool to Visit. I've heard Russians are extremely honest. Yeah. Like, brutally honest. Like, here we're kind of, like, superficial. We're a little fake in some ways, you know, because we want people to like us. I found like, that a lot in the Midwest. You, you think more of the Midwest? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. East Coast is more straight up. More I feel like, yeah. Real talk. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, Midwest people are uh, really nice. Yeah. I feel like majority of the time. Yeah. But then, I, I don't know, some people kind of fucking suck, too. Yeah. A fair amount. That is true. So what what are some other, like, big differences between Philly and here? Um, I feel like people out there just have, like, more on their plate a lot of the time. Okay. Just, like, there's more to think about, I guess. There's a lot more people out there. There's yeah. more stuff that goes on, you know? That makes sense. Like, what kind of stuff? Uh, it's like crazy stuff? Yeah, like crazy stuff. Like, that's a big part of it. Because I know we would never not hear about violence on the news. Like, oh, here, yeah. here, like, in Kansas City, we would hear about some random crap that happened in, like, Nebraska. And be like, I don't really care about this, you know? Right, yeah, But yeah. in Philly, it's like, every day, there's people with, like, getting decapitated in the city. Or, like, oh, shit. crazy shit, like, drug... Drug busts all the time. Like it's where Meek Mill's from. Yeah, yeah. Philly. Like it's rough. But um. I was in KC once, and there was a shooter. There was a sniper. Really? Do you guys remember that? It was uh, it was a few years ago. The highway shooter guy. Maybe he had a sniper. That's all I remember. He yeah, was he was I taking remember. people out. Yeah. I happened to be in KC visiting that weekend for a soccer wow. tournament. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's kind of know. crazy. It is. I don't know. There's some rough spots in Kansas City, too, actually. Yeah, yeah no, uh, I, I think... Yeah, let's look up the crime rates right now. Because I'm pretty sure Springfield 
Kansas pretty high. City and St. Louis are all in the top ten. Top ten most dangerous cities, U.S. Or yeah, I know. I don't know what poll it was. There was like top ten like worst neighborhoods or something to live in the U.S. And there was this, there was a neighborhood from Kansas Detroit's City. Detroit's up there. Yeah, Detroit would be rough. That's what I always thought would be number one. Was Detroit, but I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's even. That's what. It, that's what yeah, it, you're right, Detroit. And there's a town outside of Detroit that should be. Two thousand per one hundred thousand residents. That's the violent crime rate. Wow. Population of seven hundred thirteen thousand. St. Louis number two. Represent, baby. <laughs> represent. Yeah, oh, we yeah, shit on you, pretty, Kansas City folks. Pretty significant difference there. 1,857 like per 100,000 residents. That's like a 300 difference. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference. Oakland. Yeah, Oakland's pretty nice. So Oakland is outside of, is it San Francisco or L.A.? San Francisco, LA, I, think. I think. I'm pretty sure it's San Francisco. Isn't it across the bay from San Francisco? I don't know. I know Sacramento's right oh. next to San Francisco. I don't know if Oakland is, though. For some reason, I can't remember which one's by. Because L.A. has another big city by it as well. Here, I probably have it on my... Oh, I don't have my like, keys on me. I have this thing of Cali on my keys, but I don't... Hold on, I'm looking at my map. I've used the globe. Yeah, true. Yeah, Oakland's by San Francisco. So it's San Francisco, okay. That might not be small enough. So I guess it's... I guess it's uh, San Francisco, Oakland, and Sacramento up there. Yeah, because Oakland... I've only been to San Fran. San Francisco's right there, and then Oakland's right across the bay. Oops. Oh, that's what's up, dude. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I like San Francisco a lot. It was one of my favorite cities I've ever been to. I've never been, but my parents went in this. It was awesome. I'd want to go. I want to go to California. I saw Bernie Sanders while walking on the street, like, a few weeks no before way. he got knocked out of the Democratic primary. Wow. Yeah, walking down the street, I was with... Uh, so this this guy that was working at the hostel that we stayed at, uh, he was this really flamboyant gay dude, but he was really funny. Yeah. And it, I chilled with it was me, him, and my buddy Zach, who's this black dude from Australia, not to be confused with the Aborigines, but from Australia, he, he's uh, I forgot where his family's from, I can't remember at the moment, but uh, his family immigrated there. Okay. Uh, from some other country, and really interesting guy, yep. really interesting guy. But anyway, the three of us are walking down the street, just chilling, and uh, we've been walking around all day, and we we were we, so we just got a beer in Chinatown, and yeah. we're walking down the street, and we just see this mob of people on the other side of the street, and we see it from a distance away, and immediately what I thought I thought Justin Bieber. I was really? like, what is going on? Hey, hey, knock it off. Um, so this, this mob of people, and I thought Justin Bieber, I was like, dude, I'm, we're about to see a celebrity. And yeah. obviously we did see a celebrity, yeah. but yeah, we, we get up close to see it's Bernie Sanders. We just walk with them down the street with this mob of people. My buddy Zach, this is, this is kind of weird to think about. He gets right up next to him with a uh, backpack on, which is weird to think about because like, he could be yeah. a terrorist, you know? Yeah. And honestly, the security wasn't as heavy as I thought, protecting like a presidential candidate. Wow. Like he was vulnerable, man. Like he could have easily been killed. Wow. But he's not nearly as controversial as like Hillary yeah. or like Trump, you know? No. It was probably too. If he was just like out for a walk, it's probably because it's not like a planned event. So uh -huh. it would be hard if yeah, if I'm like an assassin really or a shooter. You, it would be hard to like plan it out if he's just you know out for a true, while. True, true. So maybe, because I feel like the right. like, I feel like a security lot of, at events is going to be a lot tighter because that's true. where like stuff's going to happen if anything's going to happen. So maybe so the real psychos come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Because it would point. be hard if you're an assassin to like predict where Bernie Sanders is going to be at any point in time. So I don't know. Maybe yeah. Uh, uh, actually, there's this new app you can get. It's a Bernie Sanders tracker. Man. <laughs> Pro I would believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. Not, I would not be surprised. Probably just follow him on like Snap Map or something. I don't know. <laughs> just see where Bernie Sanders is going. You guys want to wrap this up? Sure. Cool.
Alright. Well, uh, what should the send up be? We made it to just a little over an hour. I'll probably turn this up though, so I'll probably, uh, we'll see how long it is. What do you guys, what do you guys want the send off to be? I don't know. What do you normally do? Yeah, what do you normally do? Uh, I usually just do that. Like, I literally just ask the person I'm interviewing. Okay. Or, 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 I don't, I don't want this to be an interview. I want this to be a conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I usually just ask them to do the send off. Uh, what's your channel name? Uh, so my channel name, the original brand I built was Rarely Serious TV. And that was what I used on Vine as well. But what I'm doing for the podcast is called My Subjective Perspective. My Subjective so, Perspective. So it's the MSP podcast. All right. Well, there you have it. That's the yeah. MSP podcast. MSP podcast. You sound like a broadcaster. I like it. <laughs> All right, deuces.